All right, in this P5.js tutorial, um, I'm going to show you a couple of things you can do in terms of working with sound, both with music and sound effects, and we're going to do so through the example of this really basic, we'll call it a game, it's not really even a game, but as you can see, when we start the sketch, um, some music plays, we've got our little player drawn down here, and the only goal of this game is to get the player to the top of the screen. There are no obstacles or enemies. If I hit the up arrow key, you hear this little sound, a little water droplet plays, and our player moves a little bit toward the screen. If I click, the game totally resets. Um, so these are the mechanics it plays. This is just for an example, but if we move, every time we move, we hear that little water droplet. And if we hit the top of the screen, we get a little party, the screen turns green, and uh, we get some party music to celebrate. And we can, of course, click to start the game over. And there's our sound effect every time we play. So let's go into how we actually created this. We're going to be recreating the sketch from scratch uh, in this little tutorial. But to start, we've got two types of music. The music that plays by default. When you're playing the game, we've got this sound effect, which plays every time you move. And then music B is the party music when you hit the end of the screen. We've also got our little player who has an X, a Y, a size, and a speed. And the speed just dictates how much we move every time we hit the little up arrow key. So new concept we're going to be talking about is this preload function. So you're probably familiar with setup, which runs right when you hit the play button. Um, we usually do things in there like create our canvas and initialize some variables. And then draw, which gets called automatically when setup finishes. And it runs over and over as fast as it can, usually around 30 to 60 times per second um, from start to finish. And then a bunch of little helper functions that we will define uh, throughout this tutorial for playing the first song, playing the party music, playing that drip sound effect, um, what to do when we win the game by hitting the top of the screen, how to move our player, how to draw the player, which is just a, a circle. Um, and then what to do when we click the mouse so that we can reset the game every time we click the mouse uh, for convenience. So let's go ahead and start with how we actually go about bringing audio into our sketch. So what we're going to do is in our brand new uh, fresh copy of this P5.js sketch, we'll set our canvas up to be you know, a little bigger than normal. Um, we'll draw our background a little darker than the default. So we've just got you know our, our familiar rectangle. And let's go ahead and just start by getting some music playing. Right, so anytime we want to work with sounds, we want those audio files to be loaded before we see anything on the screen so that they're ready to play. Um, and so that's when we actually go ahead and define this preload function that we don't define in you know our typical sketch, but once we start using sound and images, we want to define preload. Um, here is where we're going to load in all the sounds we want to work with. So we know we're going to work with something called music A or and music B. Those are just you know, variable names since we have two songs we're going to play. We could call this game music that plays well, and then we could call this win music. Right? Uh, game music and win music. So what we want to do is make over here, if you click this little arrow, you'll see there's three files created when you create a P5.js sketch. Sketch.js is the one that we're used to editing. These other two we don't have to worry about. We're not going to edit them. But what we can also do is click this arrow and create a folder. So we're going to create a folder called audio, and that's going to house all of our sounds that we want to use in this project. So what we can do is click on this little down arrow next to audio and say, upload a file. And if I double click here, it'll bring up Finder where I've got music A, music B, and our little drip sound effect. And so I can click on all three of those and upload them into my audio folder. Now they're called music A and B. We're going to go with game music, so let's just see which one is which. Okay, so music A is our, our game music. Um, so we're going to go back to our sketch, and we're going to say game music equals, and we're going to call this thing called load sound, which takes a file name or a path to a file and then loads that file into a playable variable. So we're going to say equals music A dot MP3. Oops, we forgot. That's within the audio folder. So it'll be audio slash music A dot MP3. 
when you're loading in sounds, this is the thing I don't love about processing, if there's any difference in the title of the file here or its path, audio slash music, and what you have here, unfortunately, P5.js won't warn you about that. It'll just quietly kind of crash and misbehave. So if you're having a weird things, it's probably because of a typo in when you're loading your sound. So if we hit play right now, um, we don't see any errors. We also don't hear any music because all we've done so far is load the sound. We have to actually be able to play it. Um, and so we're going to make a function called play game music. And we're going to call this when, when we want the game music to start playing. So what we're going to do is say game music dot play. That's pretty simple. Um, and then we've got to actually call this function. So let's do that right when we launch the sketch, when we hit setup. We'll say play game music. So if we run this right now, when our sketch starts, our game music starts. That's not bad. Now, one weird thing you might want to note is if I were to put this inside a draw instead of setup, we're going to call this function like 30 to 60 times a second. Every time we call it, it's going to start playing a new copy of game music over top, and it sounds awful. I'm going to save in case this crashes. Okay, that's it trying to play the same song 60 times every second. So we're going to keep that in setup so it only runs one time. So our music just starts once. Okay. We also want to put in our wind music in preload. So we'll use a very similar line, only, whoops, we'll say wind music, or this one's called music B, is the MP3 file. Um, so we've got both of those sounds, and let's go ahead and create a variable for our sound effect in the same way. So we're going to declare it up here globally so we can refer to it throughout our code and then we'll say sound effect equals load sound from the audio folder and it's just called sound effect mp3 for this example. Now you'll probably in your project have lots of sound effects and you should give them descriptive names um, based on what sound they make but we're just going to stick to the one sound effect for this example. So a couple other things to get our game starting to look like a game we also talked about having a player. So we're going to declare variables for the player x position, the player's y position, the player's size, and the player's speed. Right, so those are all the things we want to track about our little circular player. So we've declared all these variables here. At the very beginning of our sketch, let's give them initial values. So our player's initial x position, let's just make that in the middle of the screen, width over 2. Their initial y position, Let's make it just a little bit above the bottom of the screen. So we'll say like height minus 40. So that's going to be down here somewhere. Let's give them a size. I think 40 pixels was a perfectly good size. And then a player speed, we'll initially set that, let's say, 8 pixels every time we move. Um, so right now I can run this. And again, I'm not going to see anything on screen, even though I defined all the attributes of my player, because I never actually defined any way to draw them. So we're going to want a function called draw player. All that's going to do is draw a circle at my player's x and y position um, at the correct size, like that. Now, we want to set up our circle so it has no stroke and a white fill um, for now. And now, again, we've defined this function. We haven't called it, so we don't see anything. So let's go ahead and every frame, let's draw the player. All right, so now we've got a, a game who starts playing music, our player shows up, and there's no way to move the player yet, um, but it does show up on screen. So let's also add a function called move player. All right, and just like with drawing the player, before we draw it, let's move them so that they show up in the, we'll move then draw, so our player always shows up in wherever position we've moved them to. Um, so for moving the player, our this silly little game only has the ability to move up. So we're going to say if key is down and then use the up arrow key to detect that. If that's happening, we want our player to move up the screen, which means our player's y value needs to actually get smaller since zero is at the top of the canvas. And we'll make it smaller by the player's speed value. Okay, so let's go ahead and play our sketch. Now when I hit the up arrow, our player moves up. Now, there's nothing to stop them from running all the way off the screen right now. If I just hold this down, our player's gone forever. Okay, that's fine. We'll worry about that in a little while. Um, 
But every time we move up, we also want to hear that little water droplet sound effect. So every time we move up, we're going to say play sound effect. And that's a function that we need to write. So just like we wrote play game music, we'll say play sound effect. And we're going to say sound effect dot play. Now, um, Theoretically, you know, we saw when we played game music over and over and over, we could get multiple copies of the same audio file running, and it sounded really bad. The same thing could happen here, where we have multiple copies of that sound effect playing over top of each other. Um, and let's just hear what that sounds like. It's probably not such a big deal, because this is a full song that goes on for a long time. This is just a really quick little blip of a sound. So let's see if I hold. I don't know if you can hear that. It still sounds pretty bad. And so what we want to do is, instead of just saying only to play the sound effect, we're going to say sound effect dot pause, and then play. So every time we call this function, we'll quickly pause it, then play it, so we only ever end up with one copy of that sound effect playing. In fact, let's use stop instead of pause. Let's see how it sounds better. That sounds much better. Now, whether I hold the arrow key down for a split second or a little longer, my sound effect only has one copy of itself playing at a time. So that's why we bother wrapping this in a function where we can say stop, then play, then stop, then play, then stop, then play. Stop means we're going to go all the way back to the beginning of the audio file. Pause means you know we would stop in the middle of it and then pick up from there. So I think that this is working just great. So we've got a lot of our little game set up. You know, we've got music. Every time I move, We've got this little bit of a sound effect. That's awesome. So the last things we want to do then are figure out when we hit the top of the screen and then go into party mode, right? Win the game. And so in our move player function, we're moving up. Great. If, you know, we need some condition that detects if we hit the top of the screen. So that's going to be based on the player's Y value being smaller than or equal to. We don't want to say totally zero, right? Because that would be the actual top of the screen. Instead, it's going to be a little bigger than that because our player has some size. So we'd say player size over 2. Um, I believe over 2 because I think we're, the size is actually a diameter of the circle. So if it gets small, that means we've won the game. So we're going to call this function called win. So we need to write that function. Um, so just like that. First thing we're probably going to want to do is change the color of the background. Let's make it green. Um, so we can head over to HTML color codes and grab a nice green. I like this one right here. Um, so we'll redraw the background in green to signify that we've won the game. Let's start there. Okay, so there's nothing to keep us from going off the edge. That's fine. That's kind of uh, an exercise for another time. But when we win the game, we also want to call no loop because uh, we want the game to pause at that moment. Um, so we're going to quit moving our player, and that's actually going to, in this case, give us the behavior we want of not moving off the screen. There are, of course, other ways to do that, to keep something from moving off screen without calling no loop. Um, but in this case, we just want things to freeze as they are um, on the screen with our player stuck right there. That sounds great, but we want to switch the music as well. So we're going to call, in our win function, play win music which just like before we need to write so play win music it's gonna look a lot like the game music function so we'll say win music dot play but here's the problem right our game mu music is already playing now we're just gonna have both play on top of each other here's what that sounds like Oof. okay sounds bad right we need our game music to stop when our wind music plays. And similarly, since we're going to allow the person to click to reset this, if our wind music is still playing when you start a new level, we, we need it to stop. So when we play the game music, we're going to say wind music dot stop. Um, this way, we're going to ensure we only have one of the two playing at any time, right? So when we're playing wind music, we stop the game music. When we're playing game music, we stop the wind music. So now when we win the level, can hear that our game music stopped um, and we, we just hear the party music so 
we're pretty well on our way. The last thing that we're missing from that original sketch I showed you was the ability to restart. Right now, once we win the game, it's just stop. We have to go all the way over and hit the play button again. So let's go ahead and define our mouse press function. All right, this is called automatically when we click. When we click, we actually have the ability to just call setup again. So this is just gonna go back and manually call setup. Cleverly, right, our setup creates our canvas. It starts the game music, which is gonna, of course, stop any win music that's not done playing yet. It's gonna reset our player's position. That's why we did that in setup. It's gonna move our player back to the middle bottom of the screen, and then it's gonna set their size and speed. Those haven't changed, but there's no harm done. And when setup is run, it's gonna immediately go back into draw, which is gonna resume moving and drawing the player from its new position. So let's try this. We can move. Oh no, do you hear this? We have multiple copies of play game music. That's weird. So we called setup, um, but we got game music playing over and over again uh, on top of each other. So we're gonna go through, I think this is how I solved this last time. Let's just see. Yep. We're gonna go through, and when we play game music, just in case it was already playing from a previous level, we're also gonna stop the game music. So both win music and game music stop, then we restart game music from the beginning. And we'll make a similar change down here so that we never have two copies of the win music playing over top of each other. Okay, so now you'll see that when I click, everything resets, and we only have one copy of any audio running at a time, including if we win the game. Oh no. I think we might also need to call loop down here. Let's try. Yeah, so when we click the mouse, we call setup, then we call loop. Because um, the draw function only gets called without you having to ask for it the first time that the sketch runs. So anyway, now we can reset our game midway or midway through the music when we beat a level. Um, and we always have just one copy of audio running at once. Okay. So hopefully this tutorial has been helpful in terms of how we actually create a little audio folder, how we can load in some sound effects that we've downloaded from external sources, how we can use the preload function to make sure our audio is available to us in variables uh, and is loaded as soon as by the time the sketch shows up on the screen, um, why we bother writing little functions as helper functions for playing our music because oftentimes we need to do these start and stop and pause commands. Um, so it's a little bit of a, a weird system in P5JS, but it's not terrible. So, you know, we're often we're just making sure we stop any other music that's playing before we play the thing we want to play. Um, and then we can use mouse press by recalling setup and loop to reset our game mid-level, which is uh, quite useful, especially if what you've done is declared your variables globally and then given them their initial values and set up. That's a really useful pattern when building little games in P5JS. Um, we also have a move player function that all it's responsible for is moving the player. We really could have said like check for win um, and then had a function called check for win and that would have taken this logic out of move player. Um, so now all our move player does is move and play the sound effect. Checking for win just sees, hey, did we make it to the top of the screen? If so, we call our little win function, which pauses the game with no loop and plays some win music and changes the background. So I hope that this has been helpful. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your day.